It's time for another look at what's spooky and spectacular in the comic book shelves this week. Remember, these aren't reviews. They're just letting you know what's going to be hitting your comic shops if you go in this week, November 23rd, 2022. Welcome back to M.L. Miller Frights. I'm M.L. Miller. Before we begin, please do me a favor and punch that like button down below. Share this video with all of your social media addicted pals, click subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell for notifications. Let's check out This Week in Comic Book Horror, November 23rd, 2022. Ice Canyon Monster, number 7, is from Blood Moon Comics. The story is by Keith Rommel, with art by Wolfgang Schwant. This is the final issue of the Lovecraftian Monster story, and it's got a Cthulhu monster fighting off a killer whale on the cover. What more do you need to pick this one up? Cover of Darkness, Origins, One Shot, is from Source Point Press. The story is by George McHale and Chris Cam, with art by Andy Bellanger. This one shot's got three standalone stories that sound awesome. Dracula has to team up with an elf riding a dragon on a quest, Dr. Frankenstein and his wife go on a holiday trip and stumble into a horde of zombies, and these three words have me salivating with horror fanboy glee. Ninjas versus Kaiju. Fucking sweet. Nobody's Girls, number one, is from Sumerian Comics. The story is by Damian Connolly, with art by Mateus San Juan. Just the cover of this book looks like it's dealing with some perverse and twisted themes involving the dark web, VHS tapes, and a missing girl. The cover alone gives me an icky feeling, and I like it. I'm really going to be on the lookout for this one from the creator of You Promised Me Darkness, another very dark and dank horror tale. Heaven's Rejects, number three, is from Source Point Press. The story is by Greg Wright, with art by Scott Sackett. Here's another winning concept. Charlie's Angels, but they're real angels, tossed from heaven to take on evil running rampant on Earth. It sounds pretty solid to me. And that cover by Alex Monick is pretty nice, too. Lovecraft, Unknown Kedeth, number three, is from Ablaze. The story is by Florentino Flores, with art by Guillermo Sana. I haven't been able to track down this one yet, but it's adapting Lovecraftian lore and has something to do with undead demons, winged menaces, and a man who might be dreaming on a quest to find an ancient evil. Yep, sounds pretty Lovecraftian to me. I really like that cover with the creepy zombie thingies on it, too. Vampirella Strikes, number seven, is from Dynamite Entertainment. The story is by Tom Snigowski, with art by Jonathan Lau. This series pits Vampirella against Lady Hell and Purgatory on an earth overrun by the supernatural. Now that's a whole lot of... Give me a boo, boo, give me a B. Go boop! Bopping around. See Vampy as the reluctant hero in this book that seems to be crossing over with a few other of the Bad Girls series in the Dynamite roster. Midnight Suns, number three, is from Marvel Comics. The story is by Ethan Sachs, with art by Luigi Zagaria. The first two issues of Midnight Suns really didn't impress me. I mean, what the hell is Wolverine doing there? And while I get it that Doctor Doom is a practitioner of the mystic arts, he still doesn't feel like he needed to be in this series. Sure, magic is a dark art filled with dark characters, but the old Midnight Suns were street-level badasses with supernatural powers, not a coven of witches. Maybe someone is enjoying this series, but it ain't your pappy nor my own Midnight Suns appearing in this book. A Foulness in the Walls, number one, is from Aftershock Comics. The story is by Colin Bunn, with art by Rodrigo Zayas. Here's another horror one-shot by Colin Bunn. His story is about a guy who builds a great life after a horrible tragedy, but guilt is a tough thing to shake, and there's something smelling pretty rank in the walls of his mansion that will not let him forget his past sins. DC vs. Vampires number 11 is from DC Comics. The story is from James Tinian IV, 
and Matthew Rosenberg, with art by Otto Schmidt. In this penultimate issue, Nightwing and his army of vampires face off against what few heroes are left standing. I love that cover paying homage to the old Green Arrow-Hawkman rivalry from the 80s JLA stories, but given that this is an Elseworlds, I really haven't been following it, as it seems like it really doesn't matter in the core continuity. But what the hell is core continuity anymore? Still, it's been promising hardcore action and horror in every issue. Sacrament number four is from AWA Upshot. The story is by Peter Milligan, with art by Marcelo Frusin. Milligan continues to deliver a wonderful mashup of dystopian sci-fi and demonic possession horror, influencing everything within earshot. This is an intense horror story made to look rank and gritty by artist Marcello Frusin. The Batman and Scooby-Doo Mysteries number two is by DC Comics. The story is by Ivan Cohen with art by Dario Brizuela. In this issue, Batman and the Scooby gang take on Poison Ivy. And it guest stars Batgirl because it would be unkeen in this day and age to have Batman knock Ivy the hell out in the end. Still, I can't wait to see who it is under that Poison Ivy mask. Is it Old Man Jenkins? Please tell me it's not. I don't want to see Old Man Jenkins in a leafy green thong. Department of Truth, number 22, is from Image Comics. The story is by James Tiny and the Fourth, with art by Martin Simons. Another arc comes to an end, and I still haven't begun reading this series. The trades of this X-Files-esque series is haunting me from my nightstand, but I just haven't found the time to crack them open yet. Hopefully soon. Still, this is a high seller and one of Tinian's most popular series, so I'll be checking it out sometime. Stuff of Nightmares, number three, is from Boom Studios. The story is by R.L. Stein, with art by A.L. Kaplan. I first believed this was to be another anthology series, and it very well may turn out to be one after this arc ends, but so far, it's a connected story about mad science, genetic manipulation, and ethical bendings. Stein has created a pretty heinous scenario where a pair of researchers find themselves in a castle free to do whatever insane medical practices they can imagine, and their minds can go pretty damn dark. DC Horror presents Sergeant Rock vs. The Army of the Dead, number 3, from DC Comics. The story is by Bruce Campbell, and the art is by Eduardo Riso. It's Sergeant Rock and Easy Company taking on Hitler and his undead troops in this mad mix of horror and war genres. I was surprised how good Evil Dead actor Bruce Campbell has been penning this series, and the panels by Eduardo Riso are some of his best. Love those covers too, especially that Gary Frank cover. Alien number three is from Marvel Comics. The story is by Philip Kennedy Johnson, with art by Julius Ota. A team of synthesoids happened upon a village of humans on a planet overrun by xenomorphs. How did these humans survive? And can they rely on the synthesoids to help them in their time of need? Find out in this continuously exciting and harrowing comic book series based on the movies. Finally, we have Creepshow number three from Image Comics. The story is by Ariella Cristantina, L. Marlo Francavilla, Francesco Francavilla, with art by Francesco Francavilla and Jorge Corona. This has been a solid series from the get-go, and this issue seems like it'll be continuing the trend. Story 1 focuses on a barbershop full of hunters who are trying to one-up each other with their stories of the hunt, while Story 2 heads to an island in search of treasure that is easy to find, but not so easy to take with you. Image has been delivering high-quality anthologies for a while, and Creepshow is one of their best. That's it for this week's haul. I'll be picking up a bunch of these titles, including Creepshow, Stuff of Nightmares, Alien, Sergeant Rock vs. the Army of the Dead, and most likely will try to seek out A Foulness in the Walls and Nobody's Girl. How's about you? Let me know which ones look good to you down in the comments. You're doomed to live the life you're meant to be stuck inside.